Wow, I am on my fourth or fifth, fifth cup of coffee for the day with not actually having anything to eat. <laughs> and that's not usual, man. I might be a caffeine pussy. I don't know, but I am fucking charged. So things might get just a little bit weird. Hey, Jennifer, what's up? Julie, how you doing? Kylie, Ty, everybody, man, hit the share button. Do me a favor, guys. Hit the share button. Let's get the viewer count up just a little bit. And while y'all are joining in, thank you very much. Um, what do I want to talk about today? Holy crap. I usually don't drink this much caffeine. I usually just have like one cup in the morning as part of like a morning ritual. But it is butt-ass cold out. I went on like a five-mile hike running some errands around. That was kind of stupid, man, in sub-zero temperatures. So now I'm all fucking coffeeed up and charged up, and it's time for to do the 420 report. Tuesday, January 16th, 420 p.m. This is Jared Dog, the 420 report. Hello, Jennifer. I'll be coming. You know, speaking of 420, I have an April 20th show booked at – the other side in Rush City, Minnesota. And if you want to get tickets for that, you better do so now because I guarantee you that shit is going to sell out. That's going to be a really good time. And guess what? Guess what, Jennifer? Uh, I'm bringing my friend, my co-star, who I go way back in the day with, way back in the day, Josh Alton from Road Dogs, from American Smartass. And we're going to actually do three hours of comedy that's april 20th man i'm looking forward to it rush city minnesota at the other side sharon frank amy tamsin jake michael everybody hey thank you guys so much for being here with me today on the 420 report talking out of my ass tuesday i'm just all hyped up on fucking caffeine the only time i ever drink this much caffeine really or this much coffee is when i do like an overnight drive or I got to be up all night for some other reason, you know, the gig runs extra long and the meet and greet goes extra long. And I got maybe got to sober up a little bit before I head back to the hotel, that kind of thing. You know, sometimes I'll do an overnight drive back from a gig and I'll have I'll have like four or five cups of coffee just so I can make it home, you know, just so I can stay awake. And I'll start getting fucking weird, man. So if the eyes roll in the back of my head while I'm in the middle of this live Facebook broadcast right now, you know, don't worry. I'll snap back. I'll come to. Don't call 911. When I'm doing when I'm doing those overnight drives and I've got a bunch of caffeine running through my system, I'll start doing really weird shit like arguing with billboards. <laughs> You know, like if I see a billboard that has like a political message that I disagree with, I'll start arguing with it in my head or I'll tell it to shut up. And then I'll start arguing the other side of the same, you know, the same issue. I'll start arguing both sides jointly together in my head at the same time. And that'll be real. That'll really fuck you up at four o'clock in the morning on a late night drive. Uh, or I'll see these other billboards. I'll get really pissed off where I don't even know what it's for. I don't even know what the, I don't even know what the advertisement is for. It'll be just like some weird, like gradient blue billboard with like a squiggly line type logo in the bottom corner. And then something like, you know, reach out if you need help. It's like, reach out. If you do reach out to who you didn't even leave a fucking number, reach out for what kind of help. You know, give me a website, give me a fucking phone number, reach out for help. I need help trying to contact the person I'm fucking offering help. Kylie, did you ever talk to Kevin from Pleasant Street? If not, I'll hound him. Yeah, please do so. I've tried to send him a few messages here and there. I don't like to hound people, though. You know, I've got a lot of dates coming up on the calendar, as is. You're going to come see me in Wisconsin. I'll be at Boxcars Pub and Grub in Clinton. That's not that far from where you're at. Uh, and that is going to be actually a very special show on Sunday, February 11th. It's the Screwy Wed Game Show that I do with Daryl Moon. So that, uh, and then we're doing another one Sunday, April 15th. It's going to be a superstars of comedy, like a World Series of Comedy type thing, also at Boxcars Pub and Grub, which is what I'm right now calling one of the best mid, 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 one of, it's, it's a really fucking great place. 
one of the best midweek one-nighters there is in the country. Phil Cooper, what's up, buddy? Looking forward to seeing you in Wisconsin. Yeah, man, I got a lot of shows coming up in Wisconsin. I believe you're going to be at the one in Janesville at Crosby Place Friday, February 2nd. Unfortunately for everybody else, if you don't already have tickets, that one is sold out. I apologize. I've got another show, though, booked on Thursday, February 1st, and you might want to hit up my boy Jack Herndon for tickets on that. Uh, one of the original Redneck Fest crew, uh, which if you got to scroll down, you got to see the Doobie Mobile video that I put up. That's how I met up with those guys originally way back in the day. Probably it's going on like probably 10 years now since I've been doing shows with that Redneck Fest crew. I don't even know if they have tickets left. So if so, uh, I'll tag all the appropriate people and everything if you guys want to. I got a lot of shows coming up in Wisconsin. I got shows coming up in Michigan, Lapeer, Michigan coming up. Uh, he said, she said comedy show, just like I have this Saturday night in New Berlin, Illinois. If I've got any Illinois friends, fans, or followers that are watching right now, hit me up with a comment or whatever, a suggestion. <laughs> Taking suggestions and compliment, comments. Your comments and suggestions, welcome. Just place them in the box. Um, place them in the box. That doesn't sound sexual at all. I told you it's going to get weird, man. We are doing the He Said, She Said comedy show this Saturday night, January 20th, as part of the Van Dorn Racing Team fundraiser. It's at the Knights of Columbus in New Berlin, Illinois. And they this is like the third or fourth year that I've done a show for those guys, and it gets fucking crazy. So I don't know if, even if you guys are aware of what's about to take place this Saturday night when I roll into town with the mutant queen of comedy, Katrina Brown, and we reunite for the comedy battle of the sexes, the he said, she said comedy show. This is one of my favorite things that I started doing in 2017. Uh, not just the fact that I get to work with Katrina, who always brings her A-game, but the fact that we join forces at the end of all of our shows to do an improvisational question and answer encore bit with the audience where you just write down whatever you want on a piece of paper, you send it our way, sex, drugs, rock and roll, life, love, relationships, you name it. We take on all comers, no holds barred, and it gets pretty fucking crazy. And a lot of material gets developed just off of that. But we haven't done it in quite a while. So I don't know, you know, the chemistry, we were really cooking there at the end of 2017 we did a show in morganfield kentucky and they were like dude you gotta be you gotta clean it up a little bit we've got some older people here tonight so just tone it down just a little bit you know it's kentucky and all and then we get quite like these are the questions have you ever had sex with a farm animal <laughs> you know is fast sex better than no sex who is more likely to have slept with an actual woman, Richard Simmons or Hillary Clinton? <laughs> what is a mo fucker? You know, it's like this is the conservative crowd that we needed to tone it down for. What does stump broke mean? See, I don't even know. See, now if you get a bunch of questions like that, you get something like this that might be completely innocent, but there's probably also some weird sexual double entendre associated with it. Joint or separate checking accounts. And then, you, you know, it's like a legitimate relationship question. Why does a man wait until you've been dating a year before he farts in front of a woman? Then it's nonstop and then thinks every fart is artistic and hilarious. <laughs> So that is the type of stuff that we, and quite frankly, not every fart is artistic. And how dare you stereotype men like that, that we think every fart is artistic. I know good goddamn well not every fart of mine is artistic. There's been some times when I've wanted to vomit from the smell of my own farts. So uh, I'm not, maybe I'm not the typical guy. I don't know. Or maybe you're just dating the wrong dudes. I don't know. I also didn't wait a year before I farted in front of my wife. I think we were dating like maybe, if you even want to call what we were doing dating, <laughs> we were together like maybe two months, maybe, maybe two weeks actually now that I think about it. We were in a shower together. I mean, we did all kinds of already embarrassing gross shit around each other leading up to that, but that's another story for another time, another place. Tonight is date night, so maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow. I don't know. I'll try to I'll get her permission 
<laughs> see if she see if I can dive that deep into our relationship quirks. Not that I hold back when I do my live stand up comedy on the fucking weekends. He said, she said, show was hilarious at the safari. Thank you, Tony. And we are coming back to the safari all the way up there in Ashland, Wisconsin. That, I think, is at the end of March. I don't know. I just have this. I should look that up. Anyway, I'll post it down below here now that you bring it up. But I'll be bringing my co-star, Nathan Tricky Allen, with me for the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick show. It's going to be a little bit different than the He Said, She Said comedy show. This is one where I team up with what I consider to be the most creative magical mind I've ever met. And I bring him up right now because big shout out and props to Nathan for his home run appearance yesterday on the CW Live. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you do that stuff. I, I, I think about like if I went on one of those morning shows, I would have to do like an Andy Kaufman stunt or like a Borat type thing. You know, I'd probably do like Jailhouse Jake and get the fucking cops called on me or some shit like that. Uh, but Nathan is perfect go in there and do pull out like the roadkill rabbit and start eating glue and trying to get the TV morning show host to eat glue and shit like that and really fuck with those guys. I can't, I you know, it's just too hard for me to bring mainstream humor into a live TV situation like that. And I don't want to fuck up their gig. I really don't. So I'd have to go in and make it like a stunt because either I look like a total lame ass or they would wind up getting complaint letters. I just don't know how to balance that out. I don't watch television. I really don't. This might sound fucking weird and crazy to some of you guys, but I already told you I'm on five cups of coffee. It's going to get fucking weird. I don't watch TV, so I don't even know like what mainstream humor is. All the comedy that I know how to do is the type of crazy shit that you sick fucks bring out to the bars and nightclubs that I perform at every weekend. You know, like the stuff that I just read off the Q&A card for example, that I'll be doing this weekend with Katrina Brown and the He Said, She Said comedy show at the Van Dorn Racing Fundraiser at Knights of Columbus in New Berlin, Illinois. And if you don't have tickets, I suggest you get them now. I, I, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't even be promoting it. That might be a private event. But Nathan does a great job with that, so I'll put the link to that show if you guys want to check it out. My co-star, the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick show, Nathan Tricky Allen. Uh, I think he hit a home run. He felt like it was a little bit uh, he's being self-critical but that's just nathan overanalyzing shit if you're watching nathan hit me up with a like jack herndon what you, what are you doing dude i was just talking about you earlier with well, the original from back you know the original redneck fest guy talk about how we went we go back almost 10 years now man and i posted a link to the doobie mobile video in yesterday's 420 report video blog so if you have missed that, scroll down. I got a lot of views on that one yesterday. Uh, just talking about <laughs> who knew pocket meat would be so fascinating. Once again, shout out to all my friends up in Bay City, Michigan at AJ Bailey's for bringing one of the weirdest, craziest, most obnoxious, free-form, flowing comedy shows that I've done yet. That's my favorite part about doing comedy, too, is when I've got enough people in the uh, audience enough characters like the redneck fest crew i'm pretty sure this is how it's going to be when i go up to janesville at schultz's on february 1st it's probably just going to be a lot of free flowing off the cuff back and forth interaction with the audience um one of the i forgot a fucking story from friday there was a somebody in the audience okay so uh girl f pro probably had a few drinks in her you know i'm not i'm not gonna I'm not going to say for sure, you know, maybe she was just loud and unaware that there was an event going on, but talking pretty much at full volume. And so I brought it to her attention, you know, some smart ass mark about shutting the fuck up. And, you know, one of those, you know, like some hack heckler line, you know, just to get her attention. I didn't mean to put my show in the middle of your conversation. Right. And so she starts in like, like kind of hostile, just a little bit. Maybe that's just her vibe. And, you know, she was joking around, but sometimes you can't tell right away whether people are being legitimately serious, whether they're pissed off or whether that's just their way of joking around. But regardless, if your job as a comedian to immediately fucking turn that shit around and make it funny. Right. So I just let her say whatever she has to say, because one of the best ways to deal with a heckler like that is once you brought them into the show to just let them say what they have to say. And they're going to give you plenty of material to work with. Trust me on that. And it happened sooner. I mean, very, very quickly. She's like, 
I asked her what she did for a living or something, or, or she asked me about having a real job. I don't remember exactly how we got into it, but she goes, I'm, I'm, I'm an IT. Um, Charter rocks. You got to go with Charter. I get a thousand kilobytes per mile. <laughs> so then the rest of the night, we were just going back and forth, and I was fucking with her about a thousand kilobytes per mile. And again, I couldn't quite tell if she was getting pissed off because I never really saw the smile or even the courtesy laugh coming from her. Or, you know, it was like it seemed like she was re ready to go. Like sometimes you get those types of people that come out to a comedy show and they want to challenge the comedian. You know what I mean? Like they really want to like, I want to see what he's made out of. I had this situation happen to me up in Alpena, Michigan at the beginning of December. I drove 16 fucking hours from New York to do it, which was dumb. I mean, that was dumb on my part to even book that shit, that kind of routing to begin with. I should have just done the fucking show in New York, but I'd battle a snowstorm, go all the way to Alpena, Michigan to perform at a place up there. And there's just two fucking drunks sitting in the front row and they weren't there to like be engaging and funny and have a sense of humor about it. They were just there to fucking test the comedian. Median, and then when you get the best of them, they're all fucking butthurt about it. So you can never tell what the situation was. But this girl up there, God damn it, if I, I just call her Charter. You know, I'm sure if somebody from AJ Bailey's is watching right now, you'll know who it is that I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but we went back and forth. And I kind of said some rude shit, too. Like, I was like, you know, can I get her a drink? And uh, I'd like to get her vinegar and water, you know, something like that. Everybody's like, oh, oh, oh. So anyway, man, what's up? Let's go into the comments. Jack Herndon, hell yeah. Jerry, we are still with you from Bay Kool-Aid Man. All right, so there you are. You know who I'm talking about. Who is the gal that kept yelling out Charter? You know, the shit about Charter and 1,000 kilobytes per mile. I thought that was some of the funniest shit ever. And that is definitely something that I will be writing into future bits, which is why one of my favorite things to do is just go off the cuff, improv with the audience. Let them fire shit out go back and forth and then leave with more fucking material than what I came with. So, Hey, once again, shout out to my friends up there in Bay city, AJ Bailey's for the good times last Friday. Any more comments? Jody, I think she was a little pissed. Do you really? We, she, we hugged it out there at the end. We hugged it out there at the end. <laughs> Maybe she was, you never know. You never fucking know. But, hey, if so, whatever. It was funny. <laughs> Sometimes you can't give a fuck. If someone's going to talk loud as shit, if someone's going to come into a live comedy show and talk loud as shit and carry on a full-volume conversation, I want to keep it funny. I definitely want to keep it funny. That's priority number one. Keep it fun, funny, interesting, engaging for the entire audience. But if somebody's going to come into a live comedy show and pull, carry on a full-volume fucking conversation, quite frankly... I don't care if they get pissed off because they're the ones fucking being rude. I'm just trying to take that shit and turn it around into something entertaining and engaging. So if she's a little bit pissed off, tell her, hey, Jerdoc says sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and uh, we got to get another show booked up there in Bay City. And then she can come out. She can have her revenge, whatever that means. I hear you're booked already for Bailey's again this summer. We, You know what? We might be. And I just forgot to write it down. I'll have to get in touch with Randy. You know how it is, but I'll let you know here on the 420 Report. Tomorrow, I'm coming back with Hump Day Happy Hour. I've got a new beer that I'm going to introduce. Somebody gave to me when I wrapped up my show in Lowell last week at Larkin's Other Place, the theater right next door to their restaurant. We packed him in with 200 people, and some dude was like, hey, dude, I, I know that you'd have drinks every Wednesday on your 420 live video. So he gave me a 12-pack of beer. Uh, so I'll be sharing some of that with you guys. So join me then for Hump Day Happy Hour. I'll also have comedian Chris Shaw calling in so it's going to be a lot of fun man i'll be getting drunk i hope you guys will join me and get drunk uh comedian chris shaw will be coming in i haven't talked with him for quite a few years but we worked together several times back in the day and this motherfucker is hilarious he's going to be headlining the grassroots comedy tour at gunderson's in lake park iowa uh this saturday january 20th when i'll be in new berlin illinois at the knights of columbus with katrina brown and the he said she said comedy show check out the link with nathan tricky allen who was on the cw live yesterday morning if you want a free copy of my cd while supplies last i've got these available right now on a website that i set up so you got to request it though you know i, I can't just send them out to everybody 
So if you want a copy of Totally Baked, I'll send you one for free. Just go to the website. I'll put the link in here. Um, I'm going to try to set it up where it's just the barcomic.com or totallybaked.com or jaredogfreecd.com or something like that. But I'll put the link on here just as soon as I wrap up in just a little bit. Thank you, Jody and Gary and Matt and Jack and Keith. Fred, Leon, Cheryl, Chuck, everybody, man. Thank you, guys. Tr uh, Trisha, Tamsin, Katrina, Brown. <laughs> Your, my kids just got to hear that. Uh, I hope it wasn't anything too raunchy. You never know when it's coming when it's about Katrina Brown, because that bitch does not hold back. So. Whew, looking forward to working with her this Saturday, January 20th, Knights of Columbus for the Van Dorn Racing Fundraiser. We'll also be teaming up again in Janesville, Wisconsin at Crosby Place, Friday, February 2nd. That one's already sold out, but got a bunch of other he said, she said comedy show dates coming up in 2018. I'll tell you all about it later on. You know how we do it here. And that's it. Thank you guys very much. Lou Deck, you're joining in, but hey. Um, watch the replay. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on what you think. I love Lou Deck chiming in. Uh, this old pro goes way back. And I want to get you on an interview too sometime. I got Chris Shaw coming on tomorrow for the Hump Day Happy Hour here at 4.20 p.m. or as close as possible. And in the meantime, go to the link that I'll put on for my CD and dog bless America.